Okay. Is this your first attempt at these services? Yes. Good. What can you tell me about this Right to Information Act? So the Right to Information Act was passed in 2005 and allows uh, the common people to gain access uh, uh, and information about the workings of the government so they can find a, uh, a, a report with the public information officer uh, in the CIC in the, the CIC, that is, the CIC. Uh, and then they can get information about uh, their yeah. to the department concerned, right? Okay. Now uh, the act also provides that certain information can be denied. Yes. Is yes. that there or not? Can so, the can certain information be denied by government departments? So a certain information, if it uh, goes against the interests of the security of the state. Can be yeah, and there are several several clauses in the section in the act which define the grounds on which it can be denied. Right? Okay. Now uh, there is a uh, the act also provides for information commissions, central information commission and the state information commission. What is their role? Basically, they are appellate bodies. Okay. Now the Supreme Court have recently issued a direction regarding the Right to Information Act. Are you aware of that? Okay. Basically, the Supreme Court has ruled that the Chief Justice's office also comes within the purview of the RTA, which had been denied. That is the significance of that. Okay. Have you heard of uh, a term called extradition? Yes. What is that? So, extradition. Uh, when uh, there is a person who has committed an offense yeah. in one country and he has fled to another country. So the country in which the offense was uh, 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 took place, yeah. it requests the other country to send the person right. back to the country. So is it. there any uh, high profile uh, person whom we are trying to get back to India? So there, uh, there are multiple such as uh, Vijay Malia, such as Neeraj Mohan. What is happening in Vijay Malia's case? Any idea? Uh, so I have what is the important aspect? Sir, so the uh, company that Vijay ran, Kingfisher. Uh, no, what is the status of his extradition? So, uh, the last that I know of hmm. was that a court in the United Kingdom ruled that uh, he can be sent back to uh, uh, India, uh, provided uh, the condition of the jails and the human rights uh, are met, conditions are met. Yeah, basically, he is also exploiting the uh, judicial system there. He has now gone and appealed to the High Court. Another person has been extradited recently in South India, a bookie called Sanjeev Chawla. What was he involved in? No. Okay. Right. Now, uh, in the Northeast, recently an agreement was signed relating to the Bruce, also known as the Riyans. What was this agreement all about? So, the Bruce were a community which originally were belonging to the state of Mizoram and they moved to Kuala after they faced uh, uh, ethnic violence mm -hmm. in uh, Mizoram. So now there is a four-way agreement that was signed between the government of Mizoram, between the group representatives, between the government of Tripura and the government of India, which provides for their rehabilitation in Tripura. How many of them are being rehabilitated? Any idea? In Tripura. Around 34,000 is the figure which has been uh, okay. Now, yeah, <coughs> you also opted for the police, right? the IPS. Yes. Uh, the Supreme Court has given certain directions relating to appointment of the state DGP you know, to prevent uh, the state government from doing whatever they wanted to. Any idea what that is? In the Prakash Singh case. So basically, the Supreme Court gave this directive in order to remove the political influence. So any individual who is appointed as is to be appointed will have to have a sort of three years. Two years. Two years. Two year tenure. Provided, but the basic ruling of the Supreme Court was that the panel will be sent by the UPS. The UPSC will select a panel, send it to the state government, 
from which they make this. Okay. Like Thank you. Sir. Okay. So Chandra Jyoti, tell me you are a student of history, and there are there is one issue which nobody has been able to explain to me clearly. You know, in India we have been you know listening to theory that the Muslim invaders came and the Mughals came and they forced some local population to convert to Islam. There was force involved. Now, if you look at other places, for example, you know, you will say that they were the conquerors, so you were, they, they could force it. But in, in, in uh, history, there, is a, there are different situations. Mongols came to Iran, overrode Iran. And instead of converting the local population which followed Islam into what they, they had, their religion, the reverse happened. Hmm. They became converted into Islam. Secondly, I have another uh, fact from history that <coughs> this, you know, in Southeast Asia there are many countries who were ruled by Hindu king. But they have to trade with Middle East and they got converted slowly into Muslim kingdom, right? No violence, no, no, there was no conquering involved there. So, I get confused because is it a myth that has been, uh, you know, perpetuated in India or, uh, you know, a wrong narrative uh, being created that a uh, lot of force was used and forcible conversion was taken. What is your view? So in my view, that mm. while there were possible conversions mm. uh, in our in the nation uh, during that time, uh, however, it was not uh, to a sort uh, to a large extent. Rather, people accepted uh, Islam because of multiple reasons. Mm. Firstly, because they knew that the women were Muslim, they also wanted to gain a certain ascendancy under their rule. So they accepted Islam in a way to. Uh, to be with the ruling party. To yeah, to what be, many people are doing now, right? To uh, get political benefits and social yes, yes. benefits. Uh, I would say it was uh, a primary reason. Is for this us. is this seriously discussed in any book in history, Indian history? This kind of uh, analysis: how many got actually converted because of force? How many were so actually? So I have read a few books uh, by, which, uh, by by Catherine Talbot. Mm. and Catherine Asher. Mm. So they discuss it to a certain extent. Mm. Uh, mm. But I'm not aware of any. You're not aware of any. Okay. okay. Now tell me, uh, they say that uh, Bismarck unified Germany and Mazzini and Kabul united Italy and they are famous characters in history. Now if you compare that to Patel's effort to unify India. I am not a history student, but as a layman I feel Patel's effort and contribution was much, much more than Bismarck and the Italian Empire. Whereas, nowhere in history books you will find that uh, as much importance as the unification of Germany or unification of Italy no history book has a chapter, Unification of India and treating uh, Patel larger than Bismarck or Matsini or Kabul. Why is that? Or am I making a mistake somewhere? So you are right in suggesting that Patel, uh, mm. the Sardar Patel was the Iron Man mm. And he did uh, play an important role in unifying the nation, mm. both uh, by uh, diplomacy as well as by force. Mm. So I do think his role should be uh, studied in greater detail. Mm. Uh, however, I feel that history still continues to be a Eurocentric subject mm -hmm. uh, and greater research needs to be done in, uh, in the, into the role of Patel so that mm. his uh, uh, contributions are much more recognized worldwide. No, what I have read is that at that time there were some 50 odd princely states and some of them really didn't want to join India but still he somehow managed. It was done by both those European countries, but you know, in history, you, you, Miss Mark is some kind of a, you know, hero, uh, and his his quotation says that Patel, poor fellow, maybe because he was a dark Indian, nobody bothered to write about him. Is that true? 
is the right. Okay, thank you. History is always his story. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, no, ma'am, Indian authors have not also. <laughs> Forget them. Now Indian. there's an attempt to rewrite history. Okay. That's okay, so uh, you won an award on Heritage India. Uh, recently, Jaipur got a tag of a heritage city. Why do you think Delhi has not got a tag of a heritage city? <coughs> In Delhi, uh, there are there have been three sites which have been named as UNESCO or heritage site uh, sites, uh, namely Milestone, uh, Red Fort, and Kutukutomina complex. Uh, however, I feel that um, Jaipur has been more successful in the sense of marketing itself as a uh, city which recognizes its heritage and uh, it promotes itself as such. Delhi, on the other hand, has not promoted itself as a heritage city. But why hasn't it promoted itself? There must be some reason. Vested in press because once you call it a heritage city, then you can't make any alterations. Uh, Ma'am, I think uh, it's not just vested interest. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel that uh, Delhi, as the capital of the country, is not the, and since um, many migrants from other uh, parts of the country move to Delhi, so it's constantly growing. So if we give, if the city receives a heritage tag, it might put a stop on the uh, growth process, which could be a real estate the mafia. Okay, you're from uh, Stevens College. Yes. Has it become an autonomous college? Uh, Ma'am, it, it is a semi-autonomous mm -hmm. college. It has applied for an autonomy. Status. So, do you think this is good that it's getting autonomy? Uh, and there are both aspects to the. Okay, tell me what are the advantages and disadvantages? Some the uh, major advantage of having a uh, uh, autonomous status uh, mm -hmm. would be that uh, uh, Saint Stephen's College can uh, design its own curriculum and have greater flexibility in appointment uh, in, in in selecting what uh, uh, in selecting their syllabus um, and courses. Mm -hmm. However, if it becomes autonomous, the uh, amount of uh, uh, grants that it receives will also reduce. So I think okay. And why are the teachers concerned? It will become contractual teaching for that. Now, um, you're from Punjab. So, regarding Punjab, we hear about the drug problem. And it is said that in 75% of the households, there's at least one person who's affected by drugs. What is your view on this? Why has it become so prevalent? And there are multiple reasons as mm -hmm. to why drug abuse has become rampant in Punjab. Mm -hmm. The first and foremost reason being that uh, there is a, uh, since Punjab is a border state, there a lot of smuggling goes on uh, in Punjab. Secondly, it's also close to the states of Rajasthan and uh, Madhya Pradesh, where uh, opium is known for legal purposes, medical purposes, mm -hmm. yet uh, farmers uh, send it to Punjab to gain extra uh, money for themselves. So it's look, it has a locational disadvantage, first of all. And secondly, I would also say that uh, since agriculture is stagnating, uh, the youth uh, feel that uh, they have not found adequate sources of employment in other sectors, which is why they are disillusioned and they... Uh, so if they are not employed, where, they get, where do they get the money from to buy the drugs? Uh, they engage in uh, uh, stealing from the family uh, and engaging in... Uh, anti-social activities. So and, what is the government doing to take care of this problem? Uh, Ma'am, the government uh, has a uh, capital uh, <coughs> since government aimed at forming a policy that focused on enforcement of the uh, Narcotic Drugs and uh, Psychotropic Substances Act and then it focused on de-addiction as well as prevention. So it's a three-pronged strategy. Uh, so uh, through uh, better enforcement of the NDPS Act, they're aiming at uh, removing all those elements who peddle drugs uh, secondly, through de addiction, those people who have who are addicted, rehabilitation homes have been set up for them by the government. Uh, and through prevention, uh, and by prevention, they are focusing on uh, promoting awareness in schools about drugs. Okay. You're from an army background. Hmm? The Supreme Court gave a ruling regarding some directions to the army recently. Are you aware of this? Uh, yes, the, uh, the Supreme Court uh, has now allowed permanent commission for permanent commission women. and. And they can be now appointed to command forces. Okay, so will the army face problems regarding these two aspects? I don't think it will face a problem. It is good that women are. Uh, no, it's good, but will there be any problems? These young people have not done the junior command courses. How will they get their promotions? Okay, my last question. If I were to ask you, 
the greatest achievement of our country since independence. What would you say? Any two areas. Or any two achievements. Now the two areas in which our country has really progressed is first and foremost, I would say, uh, science in the field of okay. science, and the second uh, area, which to some might seem uh, uh, that India has not progressed, but I do believe that in the area of women empowerment, we really have progressed from where we came okay. in 1940. Thank you. But I would say food security and maintaining our democracy. Okay, thank you. And you think can we be founded It's okay. Uh, sir, it is uh, according to mythology, it is then seen after Lakshman. According, according to history? Uh, sure. Okay, it was from local King Lakshman. And <clears throat> what was the role of Lakshman in the first war of Indian independence? Uh, sir, in the first war of Indian independence, uh, la, the Talukdars in <coughs> Awad, uh, Lakshman was the capital and the cultural center. So the Talukdars of Awad were. Uh, uh, just this was that because of the, the British rule that was influenced. Therefore, they rose up in revolt against uh, the British. They were led by Vikram Hazrat Mehan, who was the wife of Vajradi Shah, and Pirjas Kadar, who was uh, her son. There were some women who killed quite a few people, British soldiers, in the Battle of Sikandarbagh. Are you aware of this? Okay. Now, uh, have you heard of the Belt and Road Initiative? Yes. What are our concerns regarding the Belt and Road Initiative? So the first and foremost concern regarding the Belt and Road Initiative that has been started by China is that it threatens our territorial integrity because the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor passes through the uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir area. Uh, the second concern that we face with the uh, Belt and Road Initiative is that China is uh, trying to surround us in a sense by building projects in uh, Bangladesh, in uh, Maldives, and in uh, Sri Lanka. So there is a threat to us because it is uh, surrounding us from all directions. And, uh, it, uh, and, and it's, in a sense, its economic power is also growing. So India might have to face challenges in the economic sphere as well. Can you give some concrete example of how uh, its projects in our neighboring countries threaten us? Uh, so, in, uh, for instance, in, in case of uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka has uh, leased out a port to China, Sangari Kota port. Uh, so from here, uh, uh, India is at a very uh, like disadvantageous position. Now, uh, this year UN is going to be 75 years old. One of the objectives as enshrined in the UN Charter is prevention of war and resolution of conflicts around the world. How far do you think UN has been successful in this objective? So, uh, in my opinion, um, uh, I do think while uh, UN has been uh, has made an effort uh, in this direction, I don't think it has been completely successful in resolving multiple conflicts. Uh, for instance, in Israel and Palestine. Uh, so, while they have organized relief works for the Palestinians, there still hasn't been a solution to the problem there. And of course, in several countries in the Middle East yes. and in Africa. Yes. Thank you. What is India's stand on Palestine? Sir, uh, India supports the two-state solution uh, for Israel and Palestine. So it recognizes that there should be a state for Palestine. Does India has a, a, have a Palestinian embassy? Yes, it has. How is India trying to balance? You know, on one hand, it is uh, supporting Palestinian state, has allowed Palestinians a uh, pretty big role here in India, their embassy presence. On the other hand, it's also keeping very good relations with Israel. How has so India been able to achieve that? So I think uh, India has uh, sort of uh, disconnected the uh, idea of religion from their policy in Palestine. So they are not focusing on religion, rather they are focusing on pragmatic interests of both the... How does religion come into this? So religion... How does religion... It is a star battle for land. 
Israel is occupying all the Palestinian areas. Sir, religion also comes into question in the sense Jerusalem is important for Muslims. So Palestinians uh, want uh, Jerusalem under their control. And uh, uh, Israel has occupied uh, Jerusalem. Religion, if at all, is a very minor thing. Financial Action Task Force. What is this body? Is it uh, what it, its uh, approach to Pakistan? Latest. So the Financial Action Task Force aims at uh, removing the influence of black money uh, and its uh, financing for terrorism. So uh, uh, Pakistan has been placed on the green list by the Financial Action Task Force. It was asked to make certain reforms uh, in the country uh, in order to be uh, not, not to be blacklisted. <coughs> Uh, countries such as uh, Turkey and Malaysia supported uh, uh, Pakistan and as a result it was not blacklisted, it's still on the green list. Lokpal. Do we have a Lokpal? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so, is there some problem mm -hmm. with Lokpal institution which have arisen? Yes, sir. There are certain problems. Uh, what are the specific problems? Uh, if the institution of Lokpal uh, does not allow uh, investigation into the office of the uh, Prime Minister. It does? Uh, so, uh, in the cases of atomic security, national security, it does not allow uh, any access to yes. the office. Yes, but PM office it does Anyway, what are the problems? That is a different issue. What is its jurisdiction about? Some problems have arisen now, lately? No? Yeah, read the paper. Even today there is a news item that it is spending, just spending money on salary and rent and all. More than a thousand uh, complaints have been received. It is not taking any notice of those complaints. There is no progress on those complaints. Now, for gender justice, Supreme Court has given certain very important judgments. Can you recall those judgments? Yes. Sir, the, uh, the judgment uh, in the case of uh, Chippal Talak was... Uh, Chippal Talak is one. Just name the... Uh, uh, sir, Sabri Mala judgment which... Yes, Sabri Mala. Um, and then, uh, sir, the, the judgment uh, regarding uh, adultery uh, was also... Yes, good. Decriminalized in case of women. Yes, yes very good. Uh, and recently, permanent commission to women. Very, very good. Excellent. <coughs> Now you do so reading, you you're fond of reading. What is the latest book you read? So the latest book that I read was a, a book by a Turkish author, Ali Shafa, uh, Honor. Mm -hmm. Is it a fiction or yes, fiction? Sir, sir. What does it talk about? So it talks about a family of Turkish immigrants. They moved to uh, the United Kingdom and the uh, challenges that they face there. And it's how a so cultural shock for them. It is about a Turkish family? Yes. Are they steeped in orthodoxy? That are fish uh, so, uh, Turkey. Uh, what does this look make out? Are they steeped in orthodoxy? Uh, Sir, so, uh, in this case, the family is a bit orthodox. Uh, yet, uh, they are moving towards uh, opening up culture. <coughs> they are uh, placed in a certain So, it's a tragic uh, end? Yes, sir, it's a tragic end. The mother has to. Uh, it's it's an, a case of honor killing. And you've done uh, something about social service. What kind of social service? Uh, so, sir, as a part of the social service week uh, that I was in college, uh, there were many verticals. I mainly focused on uh, uh, providing my uh, reading out and ensuring that uh, these readings were recorded for the use of uh, visually impaired children. Oh. And, sir, in school, for. Who is. Name one great reformer which India has produced, social reformer. Just one. There are several, but we will consider a great social reformer. So to my mind, uh, right now, Raja Ramon, uh, What is his contribution? Give one, two, three. Uh, so his major contribution was uh, uh, abolition of Sati. Uh, that was achieved in 1820. He abolished it? Uh, so he worked towards the abolition then, of Sati. Then how was it abolished? Uh, so it, uh, a law was passed by the British. The British passed it. Uh, in 1829. Yes. What else? So uh, then uh, he also tried removing uh, the... Uh, uh, the superstitions that are associated with uh, religion. Uh, so he, for that he formed the Brahmo Samaj and uh, in this case uh, with people belonging to different castes also could get married. 
So in a way, he worked towards uh, moving past other things. Do the fifth and the sixth uh, amend, uh, schedules to the constitution? Fifth and sixth schedule to the constitution. Are you aware of them? Fifth and sixth schedule. They belong to tribal protection yes. of tribal areas. Yes. It's okay. Does it do 73 and 74 amendment? Do they provide some social justice? Yes, they do. Specifically, what? Uh, sir, they reserve seats for women. For the and Shuru Kass also. Yes, sir. And uh, if the good, state good, so good chooses. About 33 percent. And if the state so chooses, they can also reserve seats for the other backward tribes. Is there a defection law in India? Yes, sir. Where is it placed in the Constitution? So, just the 52nd Amendment Act, 1985. Issue? 10th Issue. 10th Issue. Has the Supreme Court said something about it recently? Uh, yes, sir. In the case of uh, Karnataka, especially. Karnataka or Tamil Nadu? Read it. Okay. History is your subject. Yes. Now, you're from Punjab or Uttar Pradesh? Punjab. Punjab. I was born. Right. They talk a lot about the drug problem in Punjab. You have asked, all right, then we'll not ask. They say history repeats itself. History repeats itself. Do you agree with this maxim? Yes, sir, I do think you do? Can you give some uh, good example of it, illustration? To prove this point? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. So, for uh, if we take the example of our own nation, uh, in the uh, it, it was conquered uh, multiple times. So each time the conqueror succeeded. Uh, for instance, in the case of uh, uh, oh, okay, it was conquered. Yes. Then. So the, it, the conqueror succeeded because uh, we were not united in our Very opposition. Good. good. That is repeatedly it has been. We have lost because of our divisions, yes. every, even 57 war we lost because of it. Yes. And we were not united, there was no common strategy, each one was fighting for himself. Very good. So we close the interview here. How do you think you have fared? Uh, so I could have done some more quick thinking, I was still nervous and got some... Uh, no, no, don't do too much of quick thinking. Yeah. Each answer you must think before you answer. So some facts uh, uh, I did know, but I couldn't. It is not. Them. It is not a question and answer session in the sense of you know rapid fire thing. Mm -hmm. It is a question which is trying to elicit what kind of a personality you have, whether you know the subject, and how how analytically you can present your views. Right. So there is no need for you to hurry up. You have done very well. Most of the questions you have been able to handle nice. And we feel that this will be the correct pattern of questioning uh, in the interview. They may, they may ask you about UP, Punjab, Punjab is your home state, then history, then your uh, these uh, extracurricular activities, they are important, constitutional issues, I have asked you a few, there can be more, and current affairs, like BRIU. As United Nations succeeded in conflict resolution, etc., you know, these are all important issues. Punjab problems, you must see what are the major successes and problems of Punjab. Now, I'll just give you a small uh, uh, suggestion. You were asked a question about German unification versus Sardar Patel. Your answer must be very clear. You say that circumstances were totally different. You cannot say that one did a bigger job than the other. German unification came about because Germany was controlled by two great powers. What was that? Austria, Austria and France. France. So Bismarck had to defeat both of them. He prepared militarily Battle of Königsberg. You remember? First Austria and later on France. He shattered the power of Napoleon III. You remember? Yes. So, India's position was very different. India was not having so much of a military challenge. So, each one has to be assessed 
on the basis of his own contribution instead of making a comparison. Remember this. Rest is all okay. You are doing well. Continue. Just tell me, you must have been topping the EA list, no? With 73%? No, sir. There were people with more. How many? How much did the topper get? Uh, so I'm not sure, but uh, we uh, actually are. Uh, DU has changed the system, so now we actually had S uh, CGPAs, which huh. were converted to percentages. Oh, oh. So people got more. And they get 80 and things yes, like that. In history. Yes. Now we do it. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.